Good morning. Today we're going to build this uh, cedar chest. If you want to see how we did it, stay tuned. Good morning <clears throat> and welcome to the 264th straight week of Memphis Monday. Hope you're hanging in there. Uh, today we're going to build a, a cedar chest. <clears throat> we built cedar chests before and also restored the cedar chest one time. But today we have a theme, and that is we're going to try to make it small and light. I have a tendency to make things too heavy uh, to the degree to a, a degree that makes them almost unusable. We had that problem last week when we had to redo a project because the darn thing was too big and heavy. Um, so that's going to be our theme today. And uh, so let's knock off the chit chat, have a little drink of coffee first, and then we'll get to work. We'll knock off the chatter and get to work. Uh, we're going to make today's project out of solid cedar, but I don't know if you know this or not, cedar is very light, um, and I kind of like working with it. Um, I've already got our stock cut here for our project. I'm going to have to join it a little bit and then glue it up. So let's uh, go through some steps on that. This is a picture of uh, kind of what we're going to be building. It's, it's kind of a, a grainy picture here, but you know, made out of cedar with a flat top. Here's a little drawing of, uh, I made of what I want to build, it'll be 26 inches uh, wide, 18 inches deep, and 18 inches tall. Uh, hinged at the back with a flat top that will go on top. Okay, so I need to glue up my stock to meet this 18 inch requirement right here. Now, all I'm doing here is putting, cutting about less than a quarter of an inch off each board on the width. So that I have a nice straight edge, and then I'll lay them down and make sure that the uh, the joint is going to be good. I'm not going to run them through the jointer. Our stock is. 13 sixteenths and the reason it's a little thicker than three quarters is because the this is really mostly used for siding so it has one side that hasn't been planed I kind of take my time on these glue ups because I find that if you if you let the glue if you let the glue get tacky before you stick it together you have less uh, less squeeze out and a better bond. I don't have any scientific uh, research to confirm that. It's just my feeling. I also find that just a uh, a good uh, 
cut on the table saw with a sharp blade. I get just about as good a joints as if I use a joiner. I mean, actually, that's a common feeling. A lot of people find the same thing. So what I'm doing here is adjusting my clamps. I got two clamps underneath and then four clamps on top. I'm going to tighten these ones up on top um, down pretty good to keep my board straight before I put any pressure on the other side. Because you got problems with these boards wanting to pop up and uh, accordion on you if you you're not real careful. What I'm doing while the uh, our glue up is drying, setting up our dado set. We put uh, box joints in this thing. This is the spacer; it fits right in there. It has to fit fit perfect. And then it goes here. And I got this other spacer right here so that this spacer here is exactly parallel. This spacer is exactly uh, parallel with the blade. And then I will slide it over till it's perfect. Okay, now I'm going to tighten my jig back down. And now I'll take my little screws and try to put the screws in without moving anything. Can't see that, can you? Okay, now what we have is we got the spacer that is parallel with the blade and the distance between the spacer and the blade is uh, is the same distance as the thickness of the dado set and the thickness of the uh, spacer. Okay, first thing I do is bring my stock right up against the fence. And I like to hold it down with the clamp. I don't always, but. So now I got my first notch. So I put that notch over my spacer. And there are my practice box joints. My stock is is thicker than this. This is just a half an inch. I got three quarters on the on the real stock, so that's the reason they're sticking out so far. Now, in this one, the uh, box joints don't. Uh, aren't deep enough, but this stock it hasn't been put through the uh, thickness planer and it's, um, it's thicker than my uh, 
stock we're using for our project. I might have some drama because uh, I'm not going to dry fit these. I'm just going to put glue on them and stick them together. And the reason I say they could be drama is because sometimes they don't exactly fit. But we went to a lot of trouble to uh, make sure our joints were good. So. I'm going to operate on that assumption. Well, it seems to be working. Box joints that are this long um, are harder because any errors kind of multiply as you go through. These joints are too tight, by the way. You kind of want them just to slip, slip in easy. I got the clamps on it, but I think I'm going to have to cut it down. I think it's too tall. It looks out of proportion. What do you think? angled uh, feet on this thing. Let's go ahead and install this and I'll show you how I make these. We're going to install our splay angle legs with uh, pocket holes. No glue. The beauty of pine is I can use this nice thick stock here. First thing I do, and I didn't show you that, uh, you got to cut these angles, or whatever angles you want the legs to splay out, um, so they're like that, parallelogram or whatever it's called. First thing I do is lay the, the board up there so there's no mistake. And now I draw the angle in that I know I'm going to be cutting. This thing's got compound angles all over it, but by 
putting that, those uh, two parallel cuts on there, all you got to do on your saw is keep that that angle flat against the bed of your uh, saw. Here I moved you uh, moved you around so you can see what I'm talking about. It's flat against this the bed of my saw, and then when I cut that angle it's going to automatically give me the uh, compound angle. So now if I'm living right, this will fit right in there. I have a splayed angle. Okay. Uh, what I did here is I, is I just made a little mark that's way fat of where this thing's actually going to be uh, because I want to walk it in. Just like before, this angle cut is flush against the uh, deck of the saw. Now I'll turn my saw around to 45 degrees. There's my angle. That, but it's just rough, remember? So, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now I'll take, fit this thing into place. You can see I've got to come out here. So I'll go ahead and walk this in, and we'll get to the next step. Okay, now the piece uh, fits. Got that splayed angle to it. Okay, the next step is to cut this uh, cutout out of it. Okay, to make sure all the uh, cutouts are the same made this little template with this radius here. It goes up against that angle. This is the re resultant angle of the two the compound uh, cuts. Then I just take any kind of straight edge, connect the bottom of those two together. But before I actually cut this out here, I'm going to put uh, pocket holes. I'll put a little, uh, little, little glue on the the miter. No glue down here on the uh, surface, though. Okay, there's another uh, installed leg. The double angles, uh, that provides for a, uh, this will be parallel, this is, this edge here, even though these are splayed, this edge is parallel with the, the, uh, the box, so it sits flat on the floor. Of course, I'll, I'll uh, round over these edges here a little bit. Okay, I'll do the other two and uh, we'll be on a roll. 
putting the hinges on this thing. We'll install them in just a minute. The uh, noteworthy part about them is I invented them. I took some re regular cabinet hinges and bent them so that they would work on this door. Notionally, we'll see if that theory works. Okay, let's see if this scheme's going to work. Screws just go in. And the top will open just like this. I'm going to use cedar oil, cedar oil on the inside and I'm going to stain the outside. I'm going to stain it this brown color. And I'm also going to put, uh, I know it's a cedar, cedar chest, but I'm still going to put polyurethane or spar urethane on the uh, on the outside. Well, there we are so far. I'm going to put you on the uh, time machine and uh, tomorrow morning I'm going to put some uh, uh, either polyurethane or spar urethane on it and then we'll wrap this thing up and bang there we go it's the next morning and we're finished I uh, put uh, polyurethane on it this is our cedar chest for Memphis Monday 264 it's got uh, box joints all the way around finish it with epoxy on the outside and on the inside I used uh, this uh, cedar oil gives it a real nice finish and it smells like cedar now it's got the uh, splayed angled legs the uh, I used pine to uh, make those those legs. And that was an unfortunate choice, but that's the world isn't perfect. That does it for um, Memphis Monday 264. Uh, today we built this uh, cedar chest. There are hundreds of uh, species of cedar, and most of them don't smell like cedar, but you can buy this. Uh, cedar oil that uh, can be used to re either restore old aromatic cedar or uh, to flavor uh, non-aromatic cedar to smell like cedar. Now we put box joints in it, splayed ankle the legs. We put polyurethane on the outside uh, but on the inside we just use cedar oil. Um, got some experimental hit hinges there that uh, we came up with. Uh, overall, I'm pretty satisfied. Not satisfied with the uh, pine legs, but it's another lesson to learn. All right, so I guess that'll do it. Uh, like, favorite, share, and all the stuff to you on the internet. And most important, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.